let me show you how to assemble the primary hull of the USS Enterprise on Monster Hobbies. Let's build it! Hello once again, Monster Hobbies fans and fellow Star Trek lovers. Tonight we are going to reopen our 1983 USS Enterprise model kit box and take out the primary hull. That's the saucer section here. And I'm going to show you how to assemble it like a pro. So let's go down to our bench and check this out. So here we are back on our bench again and we're just going to reopen our model box where we got our parts and take out the saucer section or the primary hull as it's actually called on the show. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So let's see. What we need to do first is actually take a look at the old instructions again and find out what pieces are involved in the primary hull. So there it is, as you can see. We have the saucer top, the saucer bottom, the clear dome, and a clear dome. Now in this build, actually there is one more piece. Let's see if I can find it here. See where they show it. Ha, huh, they don't show it. The other piece that they don't show in here is actually the impulse engines which sit on the back of the saucer in those two notches. Now it's interesting they don't show it here, but how do I know that that's not being shown? Well, if you look at the rest of the instructions, you see this bit right there. It's like a rectangle that comes out. And you also see it, sort of see it, right there. So those are the pieces that we're going to need. Are those parts of the kit. So let's just close this up for a minute. And now I do want to say one thing though. Okay, well, before I say that, I just found one of the parts. <laughs> There's your impulse engines right there. Remember, there, there's a warp engine, there's part of the pieces, and there's your impulses right there. So I'll just put that there for a minute. Now the clear pieces, we're not going to put them on in this assembly. We're not going to put them on until we start painting the model. Actually, after we paint the model, because we don't want to paint over these nice things, because they are clear. And they would go in there. So, we're just going to keep them in the box. And we are going to begin with the two pieces of the saucer section. So, let's begin actually by working on our impulse engines. And as you can see, there's a big burr on the top here, where it was clipped off the part tree, and another one there. So we want to carefully take our sandpaper and just go with the angle that already exists on the model and carefully bring our sandpaper around on it sort of like that to push that burr thing over that way and then carefully we can work on it this way as well just be careful not to round this up too much. There. Now that's gone. I'll just turn it over to this side. Do the same thing there. Being careful to follow the angle on the edge. Bring that till it goes away. Then you can take your hobby knife and just do some fine adzing to get rid of that sharp edge. And 
Now the part with the bumps is actually the top of this impulse engine. I'm coming across here. Got rid of that sharp edge. Still a bit along here. There is our impulse engine. Now, I don't know if you can see it here, but there are some kind of gougy scratches, and I think that's from the mold process. So we're going to take our fine sandpaper side and just lightly sand in and watch out for these two little marks that are there. You don't want to sand them off, but you do want to try to get rid of those little gougy things. Okay, that's looking good. Not so gougy. And remember to sand here because with the smooth sandpaper because you just hit it with the rough stuff okay and right there trying to be careful because those little line things go up here too Okay, that should get that. Now if you can see, there you go, see those two squares? This impulse drive is accurate to the TV model. Um, the, yeah, the TV model, not the pilot film models, but the actual TV one. Except actually it's interesting because those two little window things were in the pilot film. Then the second pilot, they had a whole row of little squares. And then on the production one, they went back to the two. So there's a little bit of Star Trek trivia for you. Now let's move on to our saucer pieces. And here we have the bottom of the saucer. And I want you to note this area here, there is a bit of a dimple right in the dead center. If you can see it, if you have one of these. So I'm just going to take the rough side and do a little cross sanding here. Just to try to knock that circle out. I'm doing this so that if you look at your model when the dome is on, you don't see a little sink hole right there. starting to come down. And you want to make sure your block is perfectly flat on here because you don't want to make a little funny angle on the top of this. On the top of the bottom. <laughs> Oh, it's coming down quite a bit. Got her pretty much 
Welcome to the longest part of the video. <sighs> All right. Now I'm just going to finish that with the smooth side. There you go. Now what I'll do here is just use one of these hole enlargers just to poke the, the dust out. There we go. Now, there's a little bit of flash right here, as you can see. That is, when the when this was in the mold, it was like this. And there'd be a, a piece of the mold that looks like the inside, and a piece more detailed like the outside. And the two are, are placed together like that. And then when the plastic goes through, it would create something like this, right? But along the edge of that, this is where some of the plastic leaked out of that mold. There we go. And squeezed out. So normally you would sand this off, but for this particular case right now, we're gonna leave it on and we're just gonna carefully go around here with the sandpaper, perfectly flat. This is just to correct the gluing surface from the top to the bottom of the saucer. Okay, and we're just go gently. And we're gonna leave that like that. And then I'm gonna switch with the top of the saucer. Now here, you have these three points, and these, this is where the plastic came in. One would be the entrance point. The plastic, when it was hot, came into the mold this way, filled up this whole chamber, and then came out here. That's how the mold process works. But AMT left these bits here, so we're just going to take that Atlas snap saw, and we're going to turn this over here. Let's see, and we're just going to carefully don't try to cut too close to the plastic because we can fix that with sandpaper. But we want to cut this thing off. See there, now I've left a little bit of it sticking up, that is perfectly fine because we can get that with the sandpaper block. And then we'll just get rid of this one. That was easy. And the final one. Now I'm kind of holding the saw at an angle this way. I don't want it to cut in there, because that would be kind of disastrous. Now see, this one's sticking out quite a bit. So what you can do Carefully hold the sandpaper where you can see what's being removed. And just carefully bring this one down. You can do this, you could do something similar on the other one. Now I'm bringing it out this way, I'm trying not to go this way because if you go that way, you'll just create a hump in the plastic. Okay. All right. All right, there's two ways to do this. So So this build is going to be basically right out of the box without too much modifications. Except I do want to build parts with some plastic support. But the saucer doesn't really need too much inner support on itself. Unless you're going to be very heavy and squeeze it like, like that. Eh? But if you're just going to be gentle with it, you don't really need too much reinforcement in the saucer. 
so what we're going to do is I'm going to try the Games Workshop liquid glue on this application. See how it does in comparison to the tester's glue. And we'll p carefully try to put a bead around this outer edge and then glue the top to it. So let's see how I do. Okay, there's the glue coming out now. This doesn't dry up on me when I get to the other side. Oh, knock the junk out of it. I want to pinch that together. The phone's got to ring. Oh boy. Answering machine must be full. Oh, good. The glue is still sticky on the other side. Okay. So now you'll notice a little bump right there. That goes in back here to this piece. And we'll just carefully put the lid on. center somehow. Okay, there we go. Now, here comes those clips that we made. I'll just put them around the saucer. Okay, hang on. I better go get that foam. All right, we got the crisis solved. It's just winter time. My wife's having trouble starting the car in the neighboring town. Of course, where I can't go and rescue her. But at any rate, we kind of got it going through the phone. Um, all right, so once you get all your pegs around your saucer edge, you, you can leave it overnight. And... Uh, the pressure of the clothes peg clamps will hold it together. And then, um, yeah, let it set up for your 24 hours. And you'll have a nice solid, solid saucer. All right, there's one other thing I can do right now. Although, it may have been better to do this a bit earlier. But if you notice, there's a little bump right in the dead center of this this bridge there you can kind of see it better if I do that now 
we can't get a piece of big sandpaper in here to do the cross sanding to fix this. However, what we can do to flatten this out a bit is use this knife. This is a number 16 blade. There you go, on the X-Acto knife. And if you angle it properly, you can cross adds <laughs> this down. To get this as flat as you can. Here we go, it's almost done now. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because I actually have made and this is very funny, but you can do it, and it's very simple. It is a photocopy of, or even a, a computer printout, if you want, of the bridge looking from the top down. <sighs> okay, perfection. So it's a picture of the bridge of the Enterprise, looking from the top down. And I've made it, I've reduced it down so it actually fits inside of the clear plastic bridge dome. Here, let me get the part. Well, you just look at that. Okay. So it's designed, see, this has a ring around it and then it goes into the bulb. I actually photocopied a little picture of the bridge from the top down that fits inside the bubble of that so that we can paint the light gray around the bottom ring and when it snaps in you can actually see the bridge. Now actually I'll go get a, a model where that's done. So what I'm talking about for here is actually this. Now what I've done, as you can see here, is I've taken a picture of the top of the Enterprise bridge looking under the glass, or the dome, and reduced it down into this scale for the 18-inch uh, long Enterprise kit. And as you can see, I've filled up a full 8 by 11 inch piece of paper with a ton of them. And as I build the starships, I carefully cut them out and then I'll take that cutout thing, keeping in mind that the bridge is offset by 30 degrees or whatever it was, cut that out and then glue it here with this, of course, being the turbo elevator. So that would be, you know, imaginary going there. But of course that won't fit, so I just cut it off. And now if you want to see how this looks underneath one of the bridge domes, well, here comes the USS Farragut sort of a, this is a pilot film version that I made of it. But as you can see, there's the bridge through the dome. It's a nice little touch. Uh, I left the handrails black because in the cage, it there is no red in that interior. And uh, there's the spikes on the ensign and the cell caps. And then if we just maneuver around, mark 113, mark 7. Well, I don't know and just turn her over. You can see how I handled the the rear of the warp engine with that strap and little teeny bar just like in the pilot film. And if you want a clearer image of what you can do with this bridge, this little, little image that I made, well here comes the USS Defiant. And if you notice, come on camera, there's the red handrails. And I painted that in with red paint with a very fine um, detail brush, a pinstripers brush, actually. Oh. And this dome is really, really clear. I haven't painted here because that's the glow in the dark model. But uh, yeah, you can see right in there perfectly. So that's what that little image will look like 
if you put it there. And of course you can always find your own picture of that and reduce it down and fiddle around and just keep going until you can actually get it underneath that dome. And Okay. And uh, yeah, you'll have fun with that. So what we'll do is we'll leave this until tomorrow morning and then we'll sand her up. Well, good morning everybody and here we are on the next day of our build. And we're just going to remove these clips now because our, our uh, time period for the glue to set is done. And it should be pretty rock hard by now with any sort of luck. <laughs> And hopefully the glue saturated all the way around. Okay, and there it is. Feels pretty solid. Okay, so... <clears throat> I don't know if you can tell, but there is a bit of a ridge that's overhanging from the bottom part of the saucer to the top part. It's pretty prevalent right there. Yeah, there, you can see that, that ridge hanging over. So what we want to do is sand this off, but if you notice, there's some molded in windows. There, right there. We don't want to sand those away. So how can we block this off? Do you have any suggestions? There's some of those circular ports. All right, let's find out the answer right now. So the answer to cover your windows is actually to get some of your, your masking tape. This is the one quarter inch pinstriping tape. And what I'm gonna do, is tear off a little piece We're going to cover these windows. Let's see, they stop about right there. So we'll cover it with a piece of tape. And then we're actually going to cover it twice. Because this will make it a bit thicker. There you go. Now, with the window covered, I'm going to let you do the, the rest of the windows. So there's some at the back here, then there's the two little portals, or three portals at the front, and then the one at the back there. There's not very many windows on the rim of this. Uh, okay, where are they? Here we go. So now you're going to do your cross sanding. I'm just going to go in this spot and then you guys can do the rest on your own. And uh, actually, let's go about here just to get the feel of it. So you want to follow, follow this angle with your sandpaper and you're going to go cross sand in one direction. Okay. Do that for a little bit, and then cross sand in the opposite direction. Still keeping the majority of your sandpaper on that angle. Okay. Yeah, that's looking better. Now what we're doing is we're sanding the top to conform to the bottom. So that this whole thing looks like one solid piece of Starfleet construction. Now I don't know if the camera will pick this up, maybe it will over there. So you can sort of see a bit of the ridge. Okay, so as I turn this now, look at this edge. That ridge is gone, this is completely flush. And now, just to show you around the windows. 
Now see the, the tape is taking the gruff of the sandpaper, which is all right. This is kind of the trick here because you need to actually go a little under the tape with your sandpaper without cutting through the tape, if you know what I mean because then you'll obliterate your windows. I'm starting to roll this tape, first layer of tape off. Remember, you can always go and cover it again. Sand. Cross sanding, profitable, made easy. Got it. Okay, I think I got this now. So we use the smooth side of the paper. Now, let's blow that off camera. <clears throat> then we should be able to peel the tape off. There's your windows, perfectly preserved under the tape. Now you'll notice that there is a nick in the plastic right here. That kind of uh, problem is created when you take the plastic parts on the sprue, like say this is one, and there's a sprue, and you go like this and break it off. <clears throat> This is what happens to the plastic. You end up ripping it. So that's why you should always cut with the saw or your snippers close to that area. Now with this, it couldn't be helped because that was actually from the factory. So you want to clear the dust out of here. Okay. And then you're going to want to use one of your putties now this is the Games Workshop Green Putty. I think this is a bit dried out. I'm in a bit of a putty crisis. Yeah, it looks pretty horrible here. However, well, I'll give you the concept of this even though this is quite obviously dried up. So you want to put a bit of the putty in here. Okay, and then kind of being careful of the windows, which maybe I should cover with the tape again. Just squish the putty into the imperfection. And there you go. Now this is a water-based putty from Games Workshop, so. Basically, we just got to let it dry, which will be another couple of hours. But this stuff is sandable. <clears throat> so once it's dry, you'll just sand it off. 
and it will disappear. Well, not disappear, but become flush with the edge of the rest of the plastic that's going on there. So I'm going to let you sand around. Oh, the other thing is, once you finish sanding, you're going to force a bit of a, a rough edge up here. So you just want to, again, use your adzing and just round that edge down. Just nice like that. Till it feels like your fingers are going to kind of roll off around the edge. There. Okay, so just tape these off and uh, go cross sand around the bridge and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and I've sanded this edge. As you can see, it now looks pretty decent. Still got the putty there. <laughs> but I come up to one problem here, and it is the amount, excessive amount of overhang on the front right there. Now, I just want to show you a different way you can handle this. This is one of our files. This is a more aggressive file, but you can actually use the aggressive file to just go around here and file this big amount of overhang until it meets up with the plastic underneath. And again, you can use your cross sanding technique but with the file, it's always on the push stroke. So you're pushing ahead to remove the excess plastic. Now I use my thumb here as a guide along this edge so that I don't, uh, you know, go crooked or cut into the tape or whatever. And I do believe this is starting to shave down now. But it will take a bit of time. Quite a bit of time. This is pretty thick up here. <laughs> okay, wait. I'm starting to see where it's starting to connect. There. Okay, we're just going to rough this down a little bit. Just get it a light connecting touch. Okay, that is looking a lot less overhanging. Don't know how well you can see that. My side lights are kind of bright, aren't they? So now that we got that down, we can go back to just using the sandpaper. Cross sand and keep checking. I'm not really cross sanding them. Okay, cross sanding. And I do believe that's got it. Peel the tape off and just have a look. Yeah, it looks decent. A little bit of tape residue, I think. And there you go. Now remember to take your knife. I've got quite a bit of a raw ridge on there. And just do your adzing all the way around.
And in case you're wondering, the smooth sandpaper that we're using should be about 400 grade. The rough sandpaper should be about 220. I am using 180 though, which is kind of on the rough side, but I don't think it's quite as rough. I think it might be passable. <laughs> So like I said, this this build is going to be straight out of the box. This is sort of a entry level into building this ship. And we're building it sort of semi-advanced for skills, but still within a basic kind of build frame of mind. Okay. Targeted at the beginning modeler who wants to build a really good model. Eventually, I'm going to have a, a series, maybe you're watching it now, like five months later, that's going to show like things like cutting off the bridge and making a new one that, that connects, drilling holes in for the directional lights. You know, this sort of thing. But for now, this is just your basic introductory into building your very first Star Trek Starship model. And I can feel a bit of the ridge going this way. So we'll just lightly give her a little 400 across the top here. Just, oops, getting into that soft putty. Remember to let that dry. 24 hours. Oh, and I need to sand there. Okay, and now we got the saucer completely sanded down, except for the putty there. That's a, that's a tomorrow job. An off-camera tomorrow job. <laughs> and we can peel this tape off here. Now there is a little nick right there, if you can see it. So I'm going to apply some green putty to that off camera. But what I want to show you now is the final bit of gluing. And we can use our testers tried and true here. We need to glue on that impulse engine. So what we'll do is we will Carefully, oh, this thing is pouring out. Okay, I'll just rub a bit into the cap there. Now the trick is, if your glue is squirting out, just pinch the other sides here and it'll suck it back in. Okay. Boy, I should have used the, the liquid glue. <laughs> okay. Now the only problem with the tube glue is it can tend to squish out of your glue joint. Okay, blowing the dust off. Now those two little pegs go in those holes. And then you want to push up this way so that this will glue to the bottom of that little piece of uh, plastic there. And let that guy glue on for 24 hours while your putty is drying. And come back and sand that putty off after. And there you have it. There is your saucer primary hull ready for paint and remember don't glue in the plastic parts the clear plastic here and here yet until we do the painting because otherwise you'll be painting over your clear plastic so there we go there is your saucer primary hull with the exception of your putty which you're going to sand after 
all ready to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that edition of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where we got to build our primary hull for our starship. And tune in next week when we will continue the series with building the secondary hull, this bottom piece here. And now, if you enjoyed this video, but want to see how we got here, please click up here for a review of the model kit. And if you want to know what tools you need, click down here. And if you'd like to see last week where we got to build our stand, click here. And don't forget to subscribe here, because the more you subscribe, the better videos I can make. So thank you again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.